I am drawing with very little plan here. I mean, I have some plan. I'm going to draw robots. In fact, I plan on drawing 100 of them, and this is number 55 or 56. I've been making decent progress on these, but most of them start just like this, a bunch of random designs or shapes with my pencil before I really hone in on something and decide to apply my pens. I'm using these trusty microns, probably more than anything just because they've been in my life a long time and I trust them like an old friend. But these kinds of drawings are a little interesting because they're low stress and they're low stakes. In fact, doing so many of these, if something goes awry, if one of them doesn't turn out particularly well, then who cares? I'll just move on to the next one. So far, you know, I'm probably batting seven for 10, like seven out of 10 of my pieces in this series are enjoyable to me, or I look back at and go, yeah, that was cool. And then, you know, one out of 10 is pretty bad <laughs> and two out of 10 are just mediocre or all right. And that's okay. It's part of the benefit to continuing to work on lots of things in a particular series. I know that sometimes we can feel uh, stressed or anxious about doing something of this kind or this caliber because there is a, an expectation that if you take on something of that size that you're going to finish it. You know, when I was working on the third robot, for example, it seemed rather daunting that I was going to try to do 97 more of them. But most of them don't take a ton of time, and maybe that's part of the trick too, is if you decide to start a series of things, maybe make the first ones pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. The first robots probably only took me about 15 to 20 minutes a piece, and I have done some that have taken an hour or two hours for a single one, and then like this one that you're watching take place in the background right now, probably took 15 or 20 minutes. This is sped up slightly, I do that with most of these sketchbook sessions. I don't try to do it so that I give an illusion of how fast I work, but I do a lot of weird pen and pencil adjusting while I'm drawing. It's just a physical manifestation of me thinking about what I want to do next. And those motions tend to get a little funky when it's just at normal speed. Sometimes I do these sessions at normal speed. Uh, the reason that I mention it though is I don't want you, if you're watching, to ever think that YouTubers and artists online are actually drawing as fast as they look like they are because very seldom are things done in real time. Well, why did I pick robots? For me, they're just a little bit less stressful than working on people. Figures are so easily messed up and we look at people all the time. It's easy to tell when something is wrong. There's a lot more that is malleable when it comes to a robot. I can make the arms any length that I want. I can make the body structure any structure that I want. There's a lot of manipulation that can happen there. It's kind of like if you were working on figures or humans, but you were primarily focusing on cartoonizing them, on turning them into just random shapes. And there's a lot to be said for that as well. I do think that it's beneficial, of course it's beneficial to work on actual figure drawing, to draw humans. For me, at least, it's just not quite as entertaining. And there are certain things that I want to do artistically that are going to require me to really hone in on and figure out how to draw figures. But today, while I'm sitting at the art gallery working on this sketchbook session, I'm just drawing robots because they're fun, because they're low stress, because I have a series that I want to finish, and because I have some material that I can put forth here. So I'm starting the second one now, and you're really going to watch me just create a couple shapes. I have no plan for what I'm doing with this character. I, you can actually watch it kind of take place. So as I created those first two shapes, and then the third box, and then I started creating things on the bottom, I now have the outline of what looks like a skirt. I'm going to create some hands, and this character is going to be carrying this box. But you're literally watching that come to fruition. You're watching that thought process actively occur. I did not have a plan before I started sketching this. And sometimes this works out and gives me some really cool results, and sometimes it gives me really bad results. Uh, and that's okay, you've got to be okay with it, otherwise you have to plan everything out meticulously. And again, there's nothing wrong with planning everything out meticulously. I do that with a lot of my Inktober pieces, with anything that has specific uh, intentionality to it. So some of the pieces that I'm gonna wanna work on here in the next couple months for the children's book I'd like to put together, those will all have to be meticulously planned. They'll be meticulously sketched. 
Uh, I will probably be stressed for a large portion of the work that I do. I also noticed as I was putting this box together that the perspective's not great on it, but this is something that happens when you don't plan your robot drawings out all the way. So I tried to do some things to make that make more sense, but it only kind of succeeded. But on top of all that, robots are just kind of fun. And I think that we need to be careful not to undervalue coolness and undervalue fun. Fun keeps you working on things when times are difficult. And when it comes to art, times are always inevitably going to be difficult. And they're not gonna be difficult all the time, hopefully. But there is going to be difficulty in your art journey because the skills required to do what you want to do are likely going to take a very long time. So you're gonna to have to stick through some periods, long periods probably, where your skills are not on par with what you want them to be. In fact, I don't know that I remember the last time I ran into an artist who felt like their skills were where they wanted them to be. I'm sure that there are some lovely, content people out there, or maybe some really egotistical people that feel like their skills are in the right place. But most artists are not content with where their skills are. They want to grow. They want to keep moving forward. And robots are cool. So they keep me drawing. They keep me working on things in the meantime. And that's really good for me. I find that as long as I am drawing, I have a tendency to focus on things that are difficult for me and that are going to make me grow. A lot of my studying recently has simply been on architecture and mushrooms, because mushrooms are also rather intriguing. But as long as you're studying things that are a little outside of your norm, you're going to continue to progress. But really, at the end of the day, as long as you're drawing, as long as you're trying to challenge yourself with anything, and these little robots are challenging to me. I'm giving myself random shapes, daring myself to work in perspective, to think about how light affects all these strange, you know, awkward, organic, and mechanical shapes. Like, this is, this is good practice for me. It's not particularly as good practice as if I sat down and was really meticulously planning out how I was going to do a thing. You know, if I sat down and just drew trees for six weeks, I would probably be much better at trees than I am getting at robots by doing these. But there's that trade-off. This is fun, it keeps me doing it, and I learn things as I go. I look up references when I need to, but most of the time I just kind of go. But it also keeps my head in a clear space, and it keeps my brain thinking about art in a really productive and um, fond way, which allows me then to work on studies and things that are difficult. And I think one of the best things about working on a series like this is that I never have a chance to fail for very long. So when I have a drawing in this series that doesn't turn out well, I can look back and usually the drawing that came before it or the drawing that came two or three drawings ago was pretty decent or I enjoyed it. You know, even on this page, like I like that first guy, even though he looks mostly like a chunk of rock that's smoking. Uh, he's intriguing to me. The angle on him, the perspective is intriguing. The second one is fun. The third one on this page ended up being fun. But I ended up doing one on the bottom of this page a couple days later that I really didn't like. And there actually will be a video coming out about that, about what happens when you make crappy drawings, drawings that don't turn out the way that you want. And this series is one of the tips concerning that, is if you have a lot of things going, the chances of you having a single drawing that is the only drawing you did that week or that month or whatever, and it was a failure, that makes your life really difficult. Because for that period of time, you can easily sit back and look and go like, this, this amount of time was wasted. And it's part of the reason why continuing to work on little things or studies or series like this can be really beneficial for your psyche. If one of these drawings goes poorly, I, I have others that have gone well. And if one of these drawings goes poorly, I've got others that I'm gonna do in the future that I can maybe plan and avoid that as well, clown parts. So this robot is assembling clowns or dismantling clowns, which I think we can all get on board. But I wanna come back to the coolness factor for a second, for things that are cool. I draw robots, I draw monsters, and I draw dragons a lot of the time. Why? Because they're cool. And I think we need to be careful not to dismiss coolness as a reason to focus on something. In fact, like we need to do more things that are just cool. Hikes are cool. Seeing waterfalls is cool. Watching goslings try to get to the water the first time is cool. Watching little sprouts come up through the earth at the beginning of spring. Today is the first day of spring that I'm recording this. That is cool. It fills me with joy and it's exciting. We could probably benefit from spending a lot more time focusing on things that are just cool. Cool for the sake of coolness. And 
especially as artists who are always trying to produce things that are interesting, that are cool, that are engaging for our viewers, whoever our audience is in any capacity, it makes sense for us to put ourselves into scenarios where we are experiencing things that are cool, where we are seeing things that are cool. And hopefully then our drawings and our paintings and our, our artwork becomes cool as well. Because that's a lot of the reason why we're doing this, right? Like you produce art because it's maybe therapeutic, because you enjoy doing it, you enjoy seeing things that just occurred in your head appear on paper, but also it's beauty. There's certain things that come into the world only because artists sat down and worked on them. We produce things of beauty, we bring them into existence. And maybe coolness is a less formal way of saying it, but beauty and coolness have a lot of overlap. There are a lot of really cool things that are also beautiful. When I mentioned the waterfalls earlier, the little goslings, like those are beautiful things. There are also things that are involved in nature. And I have spent some time here on the channel talking about how beneficial it is for artists to get outside to experience the, the landscape and the wildlife and things like that. Really, truly, I think that it's beneficial for all humans. Like we are creatures of this planet and we are engaged in it. Whether you come at it from a religious angle where we were created to exist here, or you look at it from a, a different, more scientific angle where we evolved to exist on this planet. Like in both cases, we are part of this world and we're part of this world for purpose or part of this world as a single derivative thing that came out of it. In either case, we should experience nature. We should get out and experience the world because we are a part of it. We are an inexorable part of that reality. And I'm gonna to have to now look up that word and make sure that I used it correctly because when you read a lot, you use words that you don't always know uh, with 100% certainty that they are the correct word. But I'll flash it up on here if it's incorrect. And then you will all laugh and that will be fine because that's what happens. So <laughs> uh, I think that's probably a good time to close this out. So. Uh, as always, thank you for listening to the session today. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope you were able to draw something interesting as you listened as well. So please share in the comments below what your cool thing is that you want to spend some more time doing in 2024 or whatever year it is that you're listening to this. Thank you to Patron Who, What, Where, When for your support. If you would like to support the channel, check out our Patreon in the link below. And if you were looking for some artistic community, check out the Discord. Have a good one, y'all. See you soon.